Put on the flip side, this is about at one level competitive intolerances about the use of power. Take a look at in your home state of Kerala. Political controversy brewing over the inclusion of the works and thoughts of RSS ideologues like Golwalkar, Savarkar, Dindal, uh, Upadhyay, and Balraj Madhok. And, and Balraj Madhok. I don't know where Madhok fitted into that. And there's a huge out, outcry. So the left is equally intolerant. Nobody, you know, why should I not know? about Savarkar or Golwalkar, exactly. you know, That's why, my why can't there be history which is with multiple voices, exactly. read in an objective manner, non-ideologically, is that at all possible or are we too hyper-polarized now to even appreciate it? People, you know, somebody sent me a, a, a message when I said that I'm, I have Vikram on the sh show, oh, he's the person who's whitewashing Savarkar for a new India. So you see, we seem so hyper-polarized at the moment. And he's not even read Vikram's book. Yeah. So my point That's would problem. precisely be this. Let's have multiple voices. I supported the yeah. proposal to include these RSS ideologues in the syllabus because it is only by reading them and understanding their thinking that you can decide where you stand in relation to them. Will How your party can... leadership support you on that? No. Or you'll be once again ostracized. Look at that bad boy. No, no, but I've already <laughs> taken my public stand and I was isolated. But the point You is... were isolated by your own yeah, party. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody who has quoted extensively from Savarkar and Gorwalkar in my writings. So how can I deny others the privilege of reading the same sources that I read? To my, from my point of view, I don't agree with them. But it's only by reading them that I know that I don't agree with them. So you cannot and should not deny college students, university students, the right to be exposed to a wide variety of views and come to their own conclusions. That applies to history, that applies to ideas, that's what education is supposed to be all about. It's to give you the equipment intellectually to discern according ultimately to your own value choices, if necessary your own ideology. I believe that it was wrong, and in the end, they have indeed proscribed those texts. I believe it was wrong to do so, and I have no hesitation in saying I'll stand up for academic freedom and intellectual freedom against even the, the sort of ideologues on my own side of the fence, because I genuinely believe in having as wide a range of materials, sources, and information. As I said to Vikram earlier, let's have both, both views about the same period. Let's read them. That's not just both views. There are multiple views about many periods of Indian history in which there's not just one conclusion. The, the intelligent reader and the intelligent student should be exposed to and have an opportunity to see what everyone is reading, writing, arguing, and then make their own minds up. But then we'll not, have a better informed citizen. But citizenry. is that possible? I ask you that. You know, you're, you're looking at an ideal situation where academic freedom, intellectual freedom exists. But it doesn't, in, in the hyper-polarized society where people are getting so sharply divided, them versus us, is it possible? Are we living in an illusory world, Dr. Tharoor, where it is simply not possible anymore to have these debates without polarizing society even further. That's only because the ruling powers and the ruling establishment appear to have taken particular sides in this debate. If the government stayed out of the debate, if the government and the ruling party and their entire panoply of power influence, media influence, all of that that comes with it, if they stood back and said, let this be discussed amongst intellectuals, amongst historians, amongst uh, uh, journalists. That, I think, would be fine, and we can have all these views. I would love to read more of Vikram and read more of uh, leftist historians. How does it matter? It's when the government has one point of view that appears to be the one that they are railroading to the consciousness of Indians that everyone gets alarmed and says, here, yeah, you're polarizing the country. Sorry to say what about three years, but that's exactly what would have been said 25 years ago when you were in power. True. You see, that's the problem. True. I was you happily know. at the UN, so don't say True. you, I but mean, <laughs> I take your point. Dr. I mean, Dr. Tharoor yeah. is in a magnificent minority, uh, you know, who, who believes in this open-mindedness. As I said, history is a handmaiden of the ruler. So in the past, when ICHR was created and so on, I, I spoke about how even during the British time, you had space for an alternate view, whereas, uh, you know, post independence it's a paradox that we do not have these alternate views to, to thrive. I mean, uh, careers have been destroyed, fellowships are denied, so many stories like this only because you didn't tow a particular line. So every dog has its day. So some people are now looking back and saying it's our time now. You can't grudge them that saying now we have to be fair to everybody and so on. Where were these virtues 20, 25 years ago? Uh, so now, in fact, as I said, 
people who are supportive of this government actually berate it for not doing enough to actually bring a civilizational consciousness or uh, something a, a, a re uh, you know statement of history so in fact uh, they they get the stick i think on both sides yeah, but it's got to be high quality let's yes. be honest and so you know part of again, the pro- part of the problem is it's not just about junking the past it's if you're going to rewrite history yeah please ensure that you do it with some element of integrity and quality